So back in the early days of the pandemic, that would be roughly April of 2020, I acquired my very first folding SX70 Polaroid camera. And that's this Black Beauty right here. Uh, really nice camera. I got it from uh, Toronto Polaroid, a good place if you're from Canada, good place to buy a vintage uh, Polaroid camera. It performed flawlessly all of 2020 and this is the camera that I used to complete my project from our windows uh, which resulted in this this book anyways it's been a wonderful camera I really enjoyed it I really grew to appreciate the uh, innovation that went into the creation of this vintage camera it was first introduced in 1972 this particular model the Alpha 1 was um, produced in 1979 a really great camera can't complain about it except for one thing is that the camera when it was designed it's really innovative but it's also completely automatic and the only override as a photographer that I have is using this little fiddly um, exposure compensation dial which uh, adjusts the exposure up or down by some unknown amount uh, other than that, the, the exposure is completely selected by the camera itself. This is the electric eye right here that would select the exposure. So the chances of getting a good exposure on the first shot are mm, relatively slim. And in there, there were occasions when it took a whole pack of film to get an exposure that I was completely happy with. So it, that's a downside of this particular camera. So enter this Polaroid SX70 camera. Uh, this one I just acquired in December of 2020. This has been a, this is a modified uh, camera. It's essentially the same one. This is also an Alpha One uh, camera uh, produced by Polaroid. This camera is refurbished by Mint Camera uh, out of Hong Kong. Uh, it's been completely checked over to make sure it's working properly. It's been cleaned nicely. It's got this really nice, beautiful new um, uh, leather covering on it, much like the original camera would have had. The front of the camera, the lens board, all the electronics are contained in this panel right here. Mint has taken the electronics and com completely revamped the electronics. And they've also installed a new electric eye right here. So. In the process of doing that, what they've done is they've converted the camera from using the standard SX70 film, and that's what this camera is designed to use, to using uh, the later Polaroid 600 film. Now, the difference here is that the Polaroid SX70 film is has an ISO rating of 100, and that in combination with the set um, F8, nominally set F8 lens of the camera, um, means that in a low light setting, uh, you're going to be in, in tough shape if you're trying to handhold the the, uh, the camera. Now this one has been adapted so it natively uses the uh, Polaroid 600 film, and that has an ISO rating of 640. That's the speed of the film. So that's a, a good two two and a half stops faster than the SX70 film. So. In a lower light situation, you're much more likely to be able to use this camera handheld than this camera right here. So that's pretty important in itself. But the other really big innovation is this little attachment that Mint has got on the camera. This is, um, they, they call this the time machine. And what this time machine allows is basically a manual override over the camera not complete manual override but enough to make a huge difference in the my ability to control uh, the exposures on the camera so basically what this camera does and it, it just attaches to the top of the into the flash socket on the top of the camera in other words in this camera this is the flash socket so it just attaches to the flash socket right there and in doing so, then it allows you, by manipulating the style, to select your shutter speeds. Um, the shutter speeds are adjustable from one two thousandths of a second all the way down to one half of a second. But then there's also a bulb and a time set, uh, setting as well. So with a bulb setting, if you're familiar with um, using um, uh, an SLR type of camera, the bulb setting allows you to uh, press the shutter and hold it and the lens will stay open, the, the shutter will stay open as long as you hold the button down. 
and then in the time setting what you do is then you you press the shutter let go of it but the shutter will stay open until you press the shutter button again so both the bulb and the time settings are ways to accomplish as long as uh, as an exposure as you want so if you wanted to do one for 10 seconds that's no problem using either the bulb or the time settings on the camera so because you're now using your camera uh, manually uh, you will have to find some means of taking a light meter reading of your subject in this case for example I'm using uh, an old uh, Gaussian meter that I happen to have kicking around it takes an average meter reading of your subject so you take a reading uh, you take a look at the setting look across from the f8 aperture find out what the uh, suggested shutter speed is then you take that shutter speed and just set it appropriately on the mint time machine itself and click away this camera by the way is called the SLR 670S Mint camera makes three different versions of the 670 uh, camera. Uh, this the S version that I have, uh, I think, is probably their most popular one from what I from what I'm understand. Uh, it has the uh, also two um, automatic set settings on it as well. So it's got an A100 setting and an A600 setting. And the A100 setting allows you to use a 670 film the 100 ISO film inside the camera and then the camera will operate totally automatically much as it did originally but if you set it to the A600 setting then it will um, be able to use the Polaroid 600 film so that's ISO 640 uh, film so that's what it allows this time machine allows you to do the uh, other two uh, versions of the uh, 670 one is called the 670 M and that's virtually the same as this except it's a slight step down and it doesn't have the a 100 setting I believe there's a step up as well and that's the 670 X and it's virtually the same as this camera except it has a little plug here so you can plug in an external flash uh, to the to the camera uh, and it will synchronize with the with the uh, with the shutter button so and that could be a huge advantage if you're doing studio photography if you do a lot of flash photography then that would be a big advantage a good reason to step up to the to the X it's not so important for me I don't really use flash at all really so the other thing about the Polaroid 670 series cameras is that the time machine can be removed from the camera and now I've got it held on by uh, a little piece of tape right here and I will talk about that in a second why I have that piece of tape. I'm going to remove that piece of tape right now just to give you an idea. Ooh, there we go. Take that tape off and you can see it comes off and basically you're back down to the original camera except now you and you can use it this way without the time machine except now it's an automatic camera again and it, it's designed to use the uh, Polaroid 600 film exclusively uh, now why would you want to remove the uh, the time machine you would want to remove it if you have the 670s or the 670m uh, so that you can plug in a flash into the top of the camera and that could be either the mint um, electronic flash unit or uh, you know if you can find them some of the old uh, Polaroid flash bars so you cannot use a flash at the same time as you're using the mint time machine on the top of the camera. You can only use one or another because you're basically both using the same socket in the camera. So that's an important thing to realize. And again, if you were using flash, that would be a good reason for getting stepping up to the 670X model. So that's the camera in a nutshell. Now I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, problems that I've uh, encountered just to get those out of the way. Uh, and that's not to diminish the the quality of the camera itself. Uh, I really like them, the, the Mint camera. But I think it's good that people are aware of these uh, situations. Uh, one is that the time machine, as I've shown here, is it just connects to the flash socket, which is a great innovative idea. Uh, the problem is that if you're walking with the camera, if you fold it up, 
you're walking with it, you have a neck strap attached and you have it around your neck, is that this thing has a tendency, it's, it's only held on by friction and it can fall off pretty easily. And I found this out the hard way pretty much the first time I, I used the camera. It was the dead of winter here in, in Winnipeg and I took the camera out um, hanging by a neck strap inside of my heavy parka and I, I think I walked about 20 minutes. I uh, took the camera out of my parka to take a picture and lo and behold the the time machine was gone. It was not it was not attached to the camera. I was having like conniption fits at this point. So anyways, I madly ran back um, about 10 minutes back on retracing my steps and luckily found the this little thing uh, just sitting on top of a, a snow pile on the trail. So I was quite lucky that I was able to recover it. And of course it's, it's now what I do is, is uh, either I take this off, if I'm w walking with it, uh, with the camera suspended around my neck, I, I take this off and just carry it in my pocket and just plug it in when I'm taking a picture and then unplug it and put it back in my pocket after I've taken the picture. Or the other thing is I showed you, I took the piece of tape off right there I attach that little piece of tape and it's just a little strip of um, it's a little strip of gorilla um, gorilla tape and it's almost like a, a very heavy duty duct tape and it's a nice black color so I just put the strip under there it's a little bit finicky to put back on that's why I'm not going to put it back on right now uh, but that will then hold it fairly tightly onto the top of the camera so um, I don't think I'd have to worry about it um, in normal situations because I have found it it, it it will also jiggle loose even if it's carried in a in a camera bag and you have to make sure as well that it doesn't somehow lift up like that and maybe lose contact with the with the electronics inside the camera itself. So that's a little bit of a downside that you have to just have to be aware of. And you know, it, your results might vary depending on on the camera. You got to remember that these cameras are all refurbished cameras. They're original Polaroid cameras. So each one is have going to have its own idiosyncrasies really. So how how well it grips the time machine might just vary from camera to camera so it's hard to, really to say so that's uh that's the one issue the other issue which is really not time machines issue it's uh, not uh, mint cameras this uh, issue really uh is that when you're adjusting your manual adjustment is limited to shutter speeds and because you're going to like from 1,000 to or 2,000 to 1,000th of a second to 500, basically you're you're jumping one equivalent to one f-stop at a time, and that's a pretty major jump when you're talking to Polaroid film. Polaroid film has a, a very limited latitude, and within about three or four stops, you're going from white to black. So making a one-stop adjustment is a fairly big adjustment in terms of the Polaroid films that are available right now. So that's a little bit of a limitation. It would be preferable if I had full manual control so that then I would have control over the f-stop of the lens itself. Right now it's basically um, the it's a nominally an 8 f8 lens uh, and you can't really change that at all. It would be nice if there was also a lens here that was adjustable because lenses on cameras um, if you familiar with using a DSLR or an SLR type of camera. Generally lenses have adjustments in terms of one half stop or even one third stop adjustments which is a much finer adjustment and it would be useful to have that especially when dealing with Polaroid films. Now I say that that's not a mint camera's issue uh, because the lens itself and the shutter and the aperture are all baked into the camera design that dates back to 1972. It's the way Edwin Land and his team designed it. To change that, to make it a modifiable aperture, would require a complete reconfiguration of the lens uh, in the camera. And that would be a major engineering undertaking, I would think, and it would certainly boost the price of this, this camera uh, significantly. So the ability to change the shutter speeds is certainly a welcome addition to the camera and uh, is worth the price of admission for purchasing this camera, which is kind of expensive uh, to start with. 
the ability to change the apertures I realize is pretty much just a dream that uh, probably is not going to be realized but maybe they, the guys at, at Mint Camera can come up with a system for doing that. They've obviously been pretty innovative so far in being able to develop these this little time machine device for the camera. So also connected with the shutter speeds is that cameras whatever camera you're talking about um, the shutter speeds can vary quite a bit. Now in the case of this camera, the Mint 670S, um, I managed to do some testing and this is by the way I've been doing some tests adapting the uh, Ansel Adams zone system to uh, use with the uh, SX70 film. That's a project that's currently in process and I'll be putting results up on on YouTube and on my uh, uh, blog post uh, soon I hope. Uh, but in doing those tests, what I found out is that basically the 160th setting on the camera, 160th of a second setting on the camera is, is off by a, pretty much a full stop. Uh, so once at 160th of a second, if you set it to 160th of a second, that means it's actually really shooting at 125th of a second. And that's a little bit of a problem. It wouldn't be so much of a problem if you had a variable or aperture, but given that your aperture is all is set at f8 if your metering is suggesting that you use 1 60th of a second then you're pretty much um, screwed you you pretty much have to move on to a different setting or accept that your your exposure is going to be off by one stop or somehow attach a neutral density filter in the front of the lens here that will allow you to use a different shutter speed or the other option is to send this camera back to Mint and see if they can possibly fix that 1 60th of a second error and get it back to normal. So there's a reason why I don't want to send it back and I'll get to that in a minute. But um, basically I'm so keen on this camera that I'm willing to accept that it has that one bit of inaccuracy. All the other shutter speeds, by the way, seem to fall in place quite nicely. What I've resolved to do, I think, for, is really, rather than sending it back to Mint, is just to um, use a neutral density filter in front of the lens so that uh, that will reduce the amount of light coming into the lens, into the camera, and therefore I can use a different shutter speed. So that pretty much covers uh, some of the uh, issues that I might have with the camera. Uh, I would say that to a large extent they're just uh, minor issues, just something to be aware of, uh, something to be worked around. Because Mint has done some really interesting innovations in the camera that builds upon the really highly innovative camera designed by Polaroid in 1972. I would say too that uh, Mint Camera is very a very good company to deal with. Um, when I did get the camera, and this was in December of uh, 2020, um, I had an immediate issue with it in that uh, when I pushed the shutter, um, either I would get a click and nothing would happen, no film would come out, or I'd press the, the uh, shutter button and what would happen is that the it would click and I'd sort of look at it, nothing would happen, and the next thing you knew, the image would be spit out of the camera, and of course, at that point then your camera's pointing in a totally different direction and you never knew what it was going to do and then other times it would actually work um, as advertised. So anyways I contacted uh, Mint Camera immediately about this. They responded by email the very same day th that I sent my email to them and with instructions how to return it to them and to their factory in Hong Kong. They fixed the camera, um, probably took them I think about a day to fix the camera uh, and got it shipped back to me right away and in the process they also shipped back an amount of film that was equivalent to the cost of me shipping the camera to them to start with. Uh, so that was nice. It really didn't cost me anything um, to do that. Uh, and it worked out, that was really worked out quite well. The only downside, and again this is not Mint's problem, is that they are in Hong Kong. I'm in Winnipeg, Canada. So the whole process back and forth took five, uh, over five weeks and most of that time was transit time. So that's the reason why I don't want to send it back to adjust the 160th of a second problem. Uh, I just will soon work around it because I really don't want to be without this camera for five weeks. I really just really like using this camera. 
So that said, I did mention that it's a fairly expensive camera and the price has just gone up and I believe now it's uh, about $1,200 Canadian to purchase this. So you're, you're going to take a hit, but from my perspective, the ability to have control over my shutter speeds, uh, the fact that it uses 600 film, Polaroid 600 film, is well worth the price of admission. So in conclusion, I'm just going to say that I really highly recommend the Mint camera. If you're really serious about uh, Polaroid uh, photography, then this is definitely a way to go, the way to go perhaps. It's certainly the only SX70 camera on the market that will allow you to gain any degree of manual control. So this is your, this is the way to go really if you are serious about your Polaroid photography. And with that, we'll see you next time and hopefully we'll be talking about the uh, zone system.